Today, we are going to review research paper titled, Accidental Ingestion of Cylindrical Batteries in Children. Interventional or Conservative Management. My name is Higgs and this is my friend, Bo Zahn. Welcome to the Higgs World. Thanks for the introduction, Higgs. In this presentation, our goal is to offer you a quick summary of the research and conclusions. We follow inquiry-based learning model where students take lead in learning. First, they get a quick review of the research via the videos. Second, they review the paper to learn and understand key concepts. Finally, they can follow up with further research on their own to dig deeper. In the end students would have learned something new, latest and relevant. Isn't that wonderful boson? Great point Higgs. Please follow the links to review the research in further details. We want to thank all the authors and publishers for making this research public, thereby advancing science and innovation. Please like, share and subscribe. Let's review the research paper titled, Accidental Ingestion of Cylindrical Batteries in Children. Interventional or Conservative Management. Ingestion of batteries is well documented in the pediatric population, since it became quite frequent after the large-scale use of button batteries. Button batteries are easy to swallow by a curious child or by accident. They can cause local necrosis and esophageal perforation, with potentially severe complications. Guidelines regarding the appropriate management of such events have been developed. Treatment consists of either close follow-up by serial X-ray images or removal by surgery or endoscopy in case of symptoms or increased risk of perforation. It is highly recommended that batteries located in the esophagus be removed urgently. However, ingestion of cylindrical batteries is rare in practice given their larger size. Their ingestion has been related to corrosive and toxic damage usually occurring weeks, not days, after ingestion. The research team in this paper presented their recent experience with two such cases who were managed differently but with favorable results in both situations. One child required endoscopic removal of the battery, the other one passed it spontaneously three days after ingestion. Both patients were carefully monitored during admission, and followed with serial plain x-rays of the abdomen. The patient who passed the battery spontaneously showed progression of the battery along the GI tract and had minor GI-related symptoms. The second patient had no complaint at admission or post-foreign body extraction, probably due to the rapid endoscopic intervention, in less than 24 hours after ingestion. To conclude, incidental ingestion of cylindrical batteries is rare in the pediatric population. Final decision regarding removal of the battery or simple observation until spontaneous passage of the battery should be taken on an individual basis. 